Good morning, grade eights. Welcome back to today's class. The city, welcome back. No, you were here yesterday. You were. Um, <laughs> I'm glad to see most of you are here. Um, okay, so remember before we start, yesterday we did um, visual literacy. We're done with that. Um, you guys are actually moving quite quickly this week, which is a very good thing. Um, so I decided that we're going to do our poem today. Um, that the one that you will get in your assessment that's coming up on the 27th of um, July. So yeah, yeah, where is Therese, Natalie? That's a good question. Okay, guys, um, it's only 11 o'clock now. So let's give a, a minute or two for the rest of the kids to join if they are. And uh, then we'll start with the, with the poem that we're gonna do. The poem's name, of course, is The Laster and Noster. Beautiful, but very sad poem. Okay, so let's just wait a minute and uh, see if somebody else pitches. Okay, guys, I'm going to start with the poem. So my plan is for us to just quickly talk about um, so um, the poem quickly. Um, so first of all, um, we're going to discuss the poem, interpret it. And uh, while we're doing it, we're going to look at some terminology. Important quote for today, the crown of literature is poetry. Very important, guys. Without poetry, Literature would be quite dull, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that is the quote for the day. And um, I want you to quickly listen to what I'm going to say here. Today we're going on a journey with this with this poem. Um, it's not a very um, happy journey. At times, it's it's quite sad, but you'll see what I mean. And uh, I'm going to ask you. Um, hope well, as South Africans, I know that we are very um, that our big five is very dear to us, and with the rhino that's being um, killed for its horns uh, these days, uh, well, a lot the past few years. It's quite sad. So this is a poem close to my heart, and I hope that um, you also enjoy it. Um, so let me read you the poem. First of all, before we start then, um, we're not going to do question one, but what, what is the situation? What do you know about the situation with rhinos in South Africa? Well, in Africa, for that matter, what do you know about the rhino situation? You can type it, you can say it. What do you know at this stage? Guys, what do we know about rhinos in, in Africa at this stage? They're being killed. Uh, for their horns and being slaughtered alive, which is terrible. Nee. Okay, so the last question. Um, yeah, Natalie, that is totally true. Um, okay, the date is the 27th of July. Is assessment. There you go. All right, um, so Natalie said, hello, Mark, for the learnings, yeah, absolutely. What we don't know, um, what can we do to make the situation better? This is a very difficult question. Okay, so, um, what can we do to help the situation? And, and that's a difficult question because I think the past few years that's what they've been asking themselves constantly. Do you think there's been? Um, so let's change that question. Question and rather ask: Do you think there is um, that people are doing enough? Enough. Do you think people are doing enough to stop rhino poaching? No, okay. So a few years back, many years ago, um, I know that there was a stage when they actually uh, put ink or something into the rhino horn so that um, 
the rhinos horn so that it's unusable or something like that. I can't remember. And then also a few years ago, they would cut it off um, so that the people can't um, slaughter or poach the rhino. Um, so that's also what they did. So there's been quite a few stuff that they've done in order to um, to help the rhinos uh, to stop to stop them from being poached. The only thing is, I don't know, in my opinion, what else they can do at this stage. I just wish that the people that does it would, would stop because our children one day also wants to see rhinos. Okay, um, yeah, apparently, Akim, they do t take it to make medicine in China. Um, I've, I've heard a lot of stories like that. I'm actually not sure which is true, but um, I just know that um, but ma'am, won't the ink also prevent the horn from regrowing? Natalie, I'm not sure. That's just many years. I think it was more than 10 or 12 years ago when I was still in school, I saw a documentary or something on that on a news channel. So it's long, long, long time. Um, it's, isn't it coming to rhinos becoming extinct? Yeah, so, so that is actually what's going to happen if, if we don't stop this. Um, but yeah, um, let's get to the poem. Let's read the poem. It's a very sad topic for me so yeah <laughs> okay let me read you the poem so Yaku Jacobs um, is a is a very good writer in Afrikaans um, and he wrote this poem Die Laster in Oster Die laat middag reik na ketting saag en kruid A meerkat versper, verspieder loer versichtig uit sy gat Hy is weg Son beesies hou hem niet van stilte vir die ontwapende koolos Stof in sonlig, sif um, stadig. Op die nette loose panster neer, soos rooikruis vliegtuie cirkel aasvoels, boor die veldslag toneel, en dier die ruip grashalms, sidder Afrika se moede loose sig. Right guys, so just for your information, a ketangsag is a chainsaw, kruid is gunpowder, a meerkat verspieder is a, is a meerkat spy, Son biases is bugs. On it means to be unarmed. A kolos is a massive being, um, like now the rhino. A panzer is armor. A roikruis vliegtuie is red cross airplanes. Veldslag to neel, to neel is a scene of combat and a sig is a sigh. So, in other words, guys, this poem so far, oopsie. Is describing to us the death of a rhino, the how it smells and and how um, like like it's it's almost like a war that's got that's happening while this rhino um, was killed and then the other animals um, how they react towards it. So yeah, um, let's start doing this poem. Okay, so stop me if I'm going too fast. This poem is in your test. So let's rather just make sure we understand. So this is the first two lines of the poem. Die laat middag ruik na ketting sag en kruid. Die laat middag ruik is referring to the late afternoon smell. That die is a bepaalde lidwoord that verwijs na specifieke middag. So remember it's an, it's an article. It refers to a very specific day and that was the day the rhino was killed. Laat middag Verwijs naar die tijd van die dag. So, um, it's the time of the day. And then the word reik, it means to smell. So, here we are working with one of our um, senses, ne? Reek sintuig. So, one of the stuff that, that we can do. Dan, na ketting saag en kruid. Now, I was very upset when I read this. Apparently, they use a, um, a, what's that word? Let me just go back. Um, they use a chainsaw to cut off the rhino's um, horn. I, I, that must be horrible. Okay, so a ketting in a kruid, die op die gewelddadige manier waarop die rhinoster gesterf het. Hy sterf onnatuurlijke dood. Quickly have a look here. The K and the K um, is, is alliteration. But this is the way that they kill the rhino in this, in this poem. The ketting, jachter saag die rhinoster so hooring met a ketting saag af. So they use that chainsaw to cut off the rhino's horn. Kruid, um, the jachter skiet op die rhinoster met gewere. So before that even happens, they shoot on the rhino with, uh, with guns. 
jachters is bezig om renosters uit te roei vir die joerings. And just in a side note, this is what's happening. They, they are killing the, the rhinos for their horns to make uh, medicine. I don't know what else. Um, so yeah, it's horrible. So that's literally how they kill the rhinos apparently. Okay, so whew, this is upsetting for me. Um, the rhyme patroon is par rhyme. So the rhyme pattern is par rhyme, reik and kreit. It rhymes with each other. And then um, the strofe bow is twee reels. So this is called an Afrikaans a couplet because the stanza only is um, consists of two lines. So it's a couplet. And then, please have a look at the resource here. This is um, this entire poem's explanation I got from Miss Cordelia Mentor, which is a teacher at Beaconhurst Worst School in West London. So I used her um, notes and um, for the poem, and uh, I thank her for that. Okay, so now we're going on to the next lines, which is lines three to five. A meerkat verspieder. Now that is a psalmist telling, a psalmist telling then being words that they put together. Um, a meerkat plus a verspieder. Um, so a verspieder refers to a, a, um, a spy, an Afrikaans, a spion. So they used, and you know what's a meerkat, it's this very noisy um, um, <laughs> little animal. So they combined the word meerkat and then spy. And that implies that the, um, that the meerkat is actually spying, is like an agent. So because the meerkat is in his little hole, after the events, when it's safe, he looks out of his hole. And um, he was looking at the, um, at the poachers from a distance. So this is actually a metaphor because they are comparing the meerkat and the spy. Then, hy loer versichtig dier sy gat. Loer is another, um, is another um, syntag. Uh, this is looking, so it's another um, sense that we use, I don't know. And then, um, it's a gat, and then please take a look at the double pin there. This refers to um, the verduideliking wat volg. So let's quickly recap. Loer is, is a, a syntag that we use to look. Then, versichtig uit sy gat. So he's looking at the, at the, um, at the um, poachers. And then the double pin there um, is explaining to us that it is um, safe for the meerkat to come out because the, the poachers is gone. And then, hulle is weg. Which means the jachters is weg. Guys, on the other note, die dieren moest in hulle pa soppens wees vir die hulle mense. So they're just saying that the animals were to be cautious due to the, the, um, the jachters, but which was still there. But now that they're gone, the meerkat and the rest of the animals are coming out. Please have a look at the rhyme pattern. It's eind rhyme. It's called what we, we, we see is geroke rhyme because... Um, the, the, the words don't really rhyme with each other there. Spider gaat weg, nothing rhymes there. And then um, you'll see that this is a, a stanza consisting of three lines, and that we call in, in, in Afrikaans a tashine. Okay, so three lines, tashine. Please take a picture. Sorry, I must actually go back for you guys. Take a picture of that, and then I'll, take a, I'll make, help you take a picture of the following. Ma'am, the assessments that's going to be in, um, in our report. Is it going to be our school or what? Um, San La, I just, um, I, I haven't actually found out yet. I'm very sorry. I didn't get to that yesterday. Um, so I'll ask um, Mitzele if, uh, if you're going to have reports or anything. I'm not, I don't think you are for the simple reason that it's an informal assessment. But let me find out. I made a note for you. So if you can just give me till tomorrow, then I'll have an answer for you. So I really don't think you're going, it's going to count for marks, but let me just make sure and I'll give you an answer tomorrow. Okay, so then the following slide there, please take a picture of that one.
Okay, ma'am, <laughs> what if the thesaurus were also part of the item file? Well, they were. Ma'am, if we go to your email, will we get a study, gu study guide? What do you mean? Do you want the study guide or do you want this? Um, I don't have study guides, but if you want to ask me something with regards to the work, you're more than welcome to email me. Um, I don't have study guides, guys. The only thing I have is what I show to you each day, and that is the, the PowerPoint. And then if I see something, I will um, put it in the drive for you guys. But that's why I'm please inviting you. If you struggle with something, please um, email me afterwards um, and I'll help you. Okay, so I'm going to the next slide. Then, real says, um, which is then line six, son basis how a need van stilte. Now, have you ever heard um, that say, well, when people, after somebody died, they say, let's take a moment of silence. This is what it's often in Afrikaans. Um, a minute van stilte. In Klandla, the date is um, um, for, for Afrikaans is the 27th of July. Son besies hou a minute van stilte. Son besies, um, you know that it has little bugs. They make a, a very distinctive sound in, in nature, especially when it's very hot. You'll, you'll hear them, and they um, they they say here son besies die namens iruus iruunis omdat hulle nie lang die son geniet nie. Hulle lewe meer ondergronds as in die son. So they call them son besies um, um, because they actually um, Whenever it's it's very hot, they will they will make a noise. However, it's ironic because um, although they are called sun bees, they don't actually live um, in the sun. They actually live under the ground. Um, and then it's also the Bieldsprak. If you ever see the word Bieldsprak, it means um, you you must look at stuff like personification and so on and so forth. So sun bees is how a minute van stilte. Now a minute van stilte is a moment of silence, and that is what people do. So the reason they say here it's personification is because the animal, the son beasties, have a moment of silence omdat um, iemand belangrijk gesterf het. So, somebody important died, in this case it was the rhino, and they give a moment of respect, a moment of silence. And it's ironic because um, they say, eindelijk moet die mens respect in die dieren toon. And, they, and as I say, they, it's ironic because we take a moment of silence. The animals take a moment of silence for the rhino that died. However, and, and it's usually humans that, that take a moment of silence. But in this case, and this is very sad, where people should actually take a moment of silence for the animals. We should actually have respect for the animals. And in this case, it was the people who killed the rhino. So the people don't have respect for, for nature, for the rhino. Okay, please take a picture. Okay, let's go on. Right, guys, then the um, next line, line seven, for the ontwapende kolos. Now, remember, I said kolos means it's something very big. Ontwapen means um, um, you don't you don't have a weapon anymore. Um, so I'm going to say here, the rhinosterse wording is afgesnei ontwapen. Now, remember, the, the rhino's horn is actually um, a way of protecting himself. So um, that's, uh, in other words, and I'm putting this in inverted commas here, it is his weapon. And in this regard, the rhino's weapon has been cut off. Hy gebruik sy wording om homself met die beskerm en te verdedig. This poor um, animal does not have any um, weapon anymore. And then the kolos word means groot. So it's a very groot dier. And it um, implies a groot dier is verklein neer dier die mens. Swak gemaakt dier die mens. Kweesbaar gemaakt dier die mens. So um, this entire um, line is telling us that the rhino lost his horn, which is supposed to protect him. This, ho this, this rhino is very big, and it was made small by human beings who made that poor animal weak and who took advantage of the poor animal. And now that animal is, is made small. So guys, um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a very sad visual in my mind, but that is what happens. 
please take a picture. Okay, let's go on. Real 8. Stof in sonlig sifstadig. Stof in sonlig sifstadig. Look at all the S sounds there. That is called alliteratie. In other words, half rhyme. Stof is a Bible of verwijzing. So they say um, in the Bible it says that when we all die, we all become dust again. Stof, Bible of verwijzing. Van stof tot stof. As tot um, as. So it, and we call that as a very big word. It's intertextualisatie. So that is when this poem has a reference to another text. And in this case, it's this poem having a reference to the Bible. So that is what, it's, what, it's, what it means. And then, the clear die op dood. Stof in sonlig sif stadig. Die dood kom stadig op die renoster af. Hy lei moendlik voordat hy sterf. Now guys, again, my heart's breaking if I read this. So we all know that the, the color of... Um, death is well they say it's, it's black so as uh, if, if the sun sets it's becoming dark and that's literally um what they're saying and they say that the, the the rhino was actually um while we guys sorry so they say that the rhino is actually suffering before he died so um, it was like the sun is setting he's suffering and then he uh, eventually died so yeah that is what this is um, insinuating. Stof and sonlig sif so the, the poor animal was becoming, becoming part of the earth again. He was dying and um, he became dust. Imagine that. <laughs> okay. Oh, shameless setting, Khomomelo. I see you're also very sad. What are these people doing? Yeah, <laughs> Lesedi. It's really sad. I, I've got a big lump in my throat. <laughs> okay. Take a picture. Okay, then real nege, op die nutteloze panster neer. Now, a panster is an arme, and it shows that verwijs na die renosterse vel, wat hom moet kan beskerm tydens aanvallen. Hy is doodmoendlik omdat hy panstarloos was, hy is useless, was om, dit, om te beskerm ten die koels of kruid. Again, a very sad thing. A panster is called the armor. And what happens is the rhino's skin is very thick. So it's supposed to protect him against, um, against any uh, one that wants to hurt him. However, um, that panster, that armor was actually not very, it was useless because it couldn't um, protect the rhino against the, the ghouls, the kreit, the, the bullets that, was, that they were shooting on him. So guys, again, very sad. The poor rhino was really... Um, yeah, he couldn't help himself at all against human nature. Yeah. Uh, Hakim Sanchez, dramatic music plays, die slowly. Yeah, shame. Okay, so guys, the panzer is the armor again. Um, and that was the rhino skin, as I said. And the rhino skin was actually not um, enough for him to, to not die by human hand. Okay. All right, let's go on. Real 10. So is Roy Kreis Fliegtuie Circle Asphalt. Okay, listen to this. So is Roy Kreis Fliegtuie Circle Asphalt. That's so is. If you see the word so is in any poem in Afrikaans, then you immediately know it is a vergelijking, a simile. So, they are referring to, they are comparing the asphalt. I think it's vultures in English. So, they're repairing the vultures to Roy Kreis Fliegtuie, which is a type of... Um, um, it's, it's a type of plane, a red plane that is there in emergency cases. So, soos rooikluis vliegtuie cirkel aasvoels, it's a vergelijking. Soos die aasvoels cirkel rondom die dooiere noster. So, the, um, the, the carcass of the rhino is laying there and now obviously the vultures are coming um, to, to eat. Um, so, the people of the vultures are not coming to save the animal, they're coming to eat it. It's part of nature. Um, 
and then uh, the irony is the Roy Kreis vliegtuig tijdens ramp is daarom mensen te red. So remember what I said, the, the um, Red Cross planes are actually there to save people, but in this case it's ironic because they, they are compared with vultures and vultures are not there to save you, they are there to eat your carcass. So I'm just going back for Ntlandla there, he said ma'am please go back. Ntlandla I'm assuming it's for a photo. All right, can I go on, Tlandla? Great, take a picture of um, Real Tin. Okay, let's go to the next one. So remember they said the vultures were flying boer die vliegslag to Neil. So it's, um, they were flying in the air um, above the, the, the place it happened. Now listen to this. It's woordspeling. Which they're playing with, with words there. This is slagveld to Neil. Word now a veld slag to Neil. So these are two different words in Afrikaans. A slagveld to Neil is a place... Um, where, where war is, but now a felt slag to kneel, which refers to a place where some, uh, uh, something is slaughtered. On the begin van die woord te beklem toe, so it, it, it emphasizes the word felt, so the word felt comes in front of slag, and it just emphasizes the fact that the murder of this rhino took place in a, in a field. The daar die plek aan waar die renoster gesterf het, en toch moes het veilige plek wees waar hy kon um, leef. Guys, sorry. Just quickly, I want to go back. I saw a little typo there. So it's referring to um, the place where the rhino was actually supposed to be safe. He was supposed to be safe in the nature, in, in, uh, in the felt, and he wasn't because people were selfish. And it's also, it's also called um, in Farsi, I don't know what that's called in English. I think it's in verse or something like that, which is there, there to emphasize that the rhino died a very um, terrible death. So it's, it's, he died an unhumane death, terrible, terrible death. So um, it makes me sad because um, this entire line is just saying to us, uh, people go into the rhino's habitat. They go into nature's habitat and they're killing the vulnerable animal who's got no other place to go. There's no other place for him or her to be safe. And yet then people go in that place and they kill them. So yeah, I don't know about you, but uh, my, my sadness is turning into anger towards these people. So yeah, I'll take a picture quickly and then we'll go on to the rest of this slide. All right, let's go on. Okay, and then the next one. And dear the ripe grass halims, they're referring to the grass, yeah, the, the ripe grass um, stuff. So they're saying, um, in verbindingswoord, the, the in um, is the verbindingswoord. In other words, guys, um, I'm, I'm going to call it a bostic word, <laughs> although it is not, um, because it's um, putting two ideas together. But andai gaan an, but andai dinge gaan an. So it's telling us that. Just as nature intended, when you die, life goes on. Rape is called frost, day op koutheid. So that, that's the, the um, um, on the grass, there's um, frost, because it's a winter's morning probably. And it's showing us that after this, life goes on, the grass is growing again, um, and, and time's going on. Um, so yeah, that is, that's what this uh, is saying. So even though the sad thing happened, it goes on. All right, so there is that. Uh, please take a picture. I said that's very insensitive. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think my house is going to flood now. <laughs> oh, 
All right, guys, let's go on. Okay, Sidder Afrika se moedeloose sig. Sidder Afrika se moedeloose sig. Sidder means to, to shiver. So it's bewe. Um, so they're saying is Sidder bewe Afrika vasteland. So they're saying that Africa is, is actually shivering. Die inwoners van Afrika bewe of ril, omdat die renoster so sinneloos doodgemaak word. So the... the um, um, it's almost like the people are getting goosebumps in South Africa because that rhino was killed actually for no reason um, at all because um, there is research that shows that um, using the rhino horn is actually not something that's needed. That it actually helps for nothing. And then they say here, hulle voel moedeloos omdat hulle nie die renosters teen jachters kan beskerm nie. South Africans feel sad that they cannot protect the rhinos against um, of those people that, that um, kills them, the, the poachers. The Nostrische woonplek is Africa. The rhino's place to live is in Africa. En toch sterf hy. Remember when I referred to that previous slide when I said um, the people go into the habitat of these animals and they kill them. Die warm component word nou is koue slagveld. Africa, when you say Africa, you think it's a continent of warmth. And yet in this case, it is actually a cold place of war against um against the rhinos and that was um that that um, line so you can take a picture and um, then guys are more than welcome to give me some thoughts on on the poem so if you maybe have a, a thought or a thing you want to share please share that in the poem uh, in the chat box Okay, right guys, just a note there. So we, when we have a poem that consists of six, um, of six lines, then we call that a sestet. Okay, and then rhyme, the rhyme in this poem is eindrijm or gebroke rhyme, which means it doesn't rhyme um, uh, very, um, um, consistently, and then the stemming, this is an important thing, stemming beteken, the feeling that you get when reading the poem, and obviously for me it was heartache. The theme of the poem is people that's ruining nature. Die mense is besig om die natuur uit te wis. Um, in my opinion, I think people are getting too clever for themselves. They're ruining the only beautiful thing there is really in this world, and that's nature. Um, okay, now let's see here. I would have slapped those poachers. Yes, me too. Me too, Land Land Sevi. Definitely. Um, all right. So there you have it. Let's do the questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going back to the poem. Take a picture of the poem. And then I'm going to ask you questions from the poem. So take a picture so that you've got the, the um, poem in front of you. Can I count to five? One, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going on to the questions. Okay, let's go to the questions. Guys, I hope I didn't make you too sad. <laughs> All right, let's do this. What impliceer the title van die gedig? Guys, so the title of the poem is Die Laaste Renoster, The Last Rhino. What does that tell us? What is the what is the poet trying to tell us? Let's see. Let's see what you guys wrote here. Come on. What is the poet trying to say with the title? The last Renoster. Guys, wake up. <laughs> it's very cold here in Joburg today. So I hope it's not freezing with you too. Let's see. What is the poet trying to, to, imp, um, to imply when he says the last rhino? Gumumelo says that we don't care about animals. Yes, uh, people don't often care about animals. But what else, guys? Listen to the two words I'm saying. The last rhino. The last uh, renoster. 
it's implying that we will kill and kill and kill until it's the very last rhino. And yes, there is like the other one. Until it's the very last rhino that we kill. Nee. So the answer there is, of course, that implies that the men of jachters, rhinoceros, eat rui. So it implies that people are killing the rhino. They are trying to to make the rhino extinct. I don't know why they are doing that. I, Number two, what are the time of the day find the eight-person class? What time of the day? Go and look in um, line two of the poem. What time of the day is the slaughtering happening? What time of the day is the slaughtering happening? Okay, that is the, um, that's what they used to kill the rider. I'm asking what time of the day is it happening? Um, let me just make sure that it is line two. Yes, it is late middag. Well done. Good. So late middag. Line, uh, question three. Op wat er manier word die renoster dood gemaak? Haal een woord aan om jou antwoord in 1.3.1 te motiveer. Okay, guys, the only thing I want you to do is um, how, the, how, how is the rhino killed? How is the rhino killed? Uh, take a word out of the poem. So take a word from the poem and then tell me how this rhino is killed. Guys, anyone? Okay, so Gumumele says with gunpowder, yes. So that's correct. So the rhino is actually being shot. And then they use the word krait in the um in the um poem, which is then as Gumumele said, gunpowder. Right, number four. Waarvoor word die ketting gebruik? Why do they use the chainsaw? Why do they use the chainsaw, guys? Why do you think? Yes, uh, Bonnie, um, so it's there to, to cut off the rhino's horn. So that word gebruik om die rhinosterse hoering af te snij. Number five, kies die correcte antwoord tussen hakies. Die woord meerkat verspieder is a voorbeeld van vergelijking of meer metafoor. Guys, so listen here. Remember I said the meerkat is being um, compared with the spy. So is that a, a metaphor or a, um, or a simile? The answer is metafoor. Thank you, Tlandla. You are correct. Number six, waarmee word die, die meerkat vergelijk with what is the A spy. Okay, so an Afrikaans met a spion. Seven, what is the function of the double point in real fear? Now you've got the poem in front of you. Go to line four and look at the, at the double point. Okay, that, um, when I say to quote, it means I'm going to use aanhalingstekens. But with double point, it says a verduideliking volg that the meerkat geloor het om te kyk of die jachter al weg is. So whenever you see a double point or a um, aandagstrip, you know information is following. And in this poem, after the double point in real four, it means that there is an explanation of the meerkat that is, um, that is looking at um, whether the jachters are already gone. Okay, number eight. Waarom is it belangrijk for the meerkat om te sien of al die jachters al weg is? Why is it important for the meerkat to see um, of to look whether all the, um, the poachers are already away before he gets out of the hole. Guys, that's obvious. Why would the poor meerkat not come out of, uh, not come out of that if he doesn't know? The answer there, 
obviously he's afraid. Um, so it's only safe for the animals to come out when the the poachers are gone. So when it's so that it's not so when it's not safe for them anymore. Uh, when it's safe for them to come out. Sorry. Nummer 9. Wat vir sintuig word in stroof vir een gebruik? Haal 'n voorbeeld om te motiveer. Read the question and see whether you can figure out what it means. So it's one of your senses. What is sintuig? What sense? Um, is being used in, in um, stanza one. Read your first stanza again and say, does it say something about feeling, looking, smelling, touching? And, and what is the sense that they're using there? And then quote a word. So what sense are they talking about? Okay. So look at stanza one. Are they uh, what? What are they um, implying? They what sense are they using? Are they smelling, looking, seeing, and then quote a word to prove your answer? Right, guys, I know this is a bit of a difficult one. So the answer there is the word reik. It refers to smelling, your reek sintuig. So please look at the answer there. What is sintuig word in strofe 1 gebruik? Haal a word aan om jou antwoord te motiveer. It's reek sintuig and we are smelling. Okay, um, guys, I see our time is almost up. So um, we're going to continue with the poem tomorrow. And um, I'll find out for you with regards to the assessment, how it's going to work. And then I'll come back with that to you tomorrow. Please uh, pitch for tomorrow's class. I want to finish up these questions and then also start with the next PowerPoint. Have a wonderful day. Masks on, sanitize your hands. Take care, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.